camera number one is recording. Camera number two is recording. Camtasia is recording. That's going to serve as the master audio. We'll synchronize. And we'll see if it works. What's happening, boot junkies? Mike Delgadio here, back with another video on Home Studio Setup for VoiceOver. And what I thought I'd do today is give you uh, sort of an overview of how you might set up Reaper for punch and roll recording. Punch and roll recording is a way, uh, is a technique for recording, especially for long form recording, where you edit and record all at the same time. As an aside, if you've watched uh, one of my videos I made a long time ago uh, about the dog clicker, the dog clicker, that's a technique that I, for lack of a better word, I call that click and go recording. In that scenario, you create the recording first, then go back and edit it as a second pass. By looking at the visual waveform, you can accelerate how you do that editing. But most of the time, if you're, a, uh, if you're doing audiobook recording, if you're doing long form recording, you'll do punch and roll recording because you end up at the end of the recording session with the file already fairly completely edited. You may still need to tweak it a little bit, but generally speaking, it will be edited at the all at once. I've been doing a lot of long form recording uh, for over the past few weeks, um, lots and lots of really long form recording. And I realized I never actually demonstrated how I do punch and roll. So figure I'd show it to you today. Now, Reaper, the DAW that I use and the one I demonstrate on this channel, by default, is not set up for punch and roll recording. And so we're, gonna, we're going to need to make a couple of different configuration changes to it. Really trivial stuff, be super easy. So let's go through those settings and then I'll demonstrate for you. We'll actually pick a script, we'll, we'll pick a, a script code and we'll actually do some punch and roll recording. So you'll be able to see how it works. The first thing we need to do though, is we need to re uh, we need to make some configuration changes. The first one is just a, a simple setting, and that is to switch from takes to tape mode, takes mode to tape mode. Let me demonstrate what I'm talking about. By default, when you're recording and you start to lay down uh, uh, some audio, so this is just recording me speaking right now. If you go back and you start to re-record over some place that you've recorded before, if you need to fix a mistake by going back and re-recording over a section, what it Reaper does by default is it adds another lane. It adds a second take. So you can actually go back and play either of the takes. This is very handy for musicians if they're going to sort of vamp over the same bar and they want to experiment with different phrasing for that bar of music. Being able to create multiple takes, that's very handy and it makes it easy to go back and choose which take is the right take for your recording. For us voice actors, it's the last take is generally the one that we want and we want to keep moving forward with. If we're doing multiple takes, it's because generally because we've made a mistake and we're not happy with the performance, so we want to keep moving forward. So the first change is to switch Reaper from the takes mode to the tape mode. And we do that under options there's a choice here that says new recording that overlaps existing media items. What does Reaper do when the recording overlaps something that you've done before? And we want to switch from the default of the create new takes to trim the item from behind and create a new recording. Essentially, this is called tape mode because we're taping over the last recording, just like the old days with tape. If you're old enough to remember recording to tape, you taped over it. You didn't get multiple takes. So you switch to tape mode. Now, when we go to record and we start to record, I'll just continue recording here. And now if I want to go back and fix a mistake, when I go back and record, it will just overwrite that take. It essentially clobbers. It get, gets rid of the old bad take and it just lays a new one right on top. So that way there's always just one take, the final take. The next thing we'll want to do is we'll want to map a couple of keys on our keyboard to make it so that we uh, need a little bit less dexterity on the keyboard in order to activate play and record. And it's really easy, easy, easy in Reaper to map additional keys. So normally by default, when you're mapping uh, the, the keys that are mapped by default for Reaper, if you want to hit play, 
if you want to play, you hit the space bar and the space bar again to stop. But record is an actual key combination. It is command R. Think on the uh, on the PC, it's uh, control R. So command R will start and stop. And then you can, you can do command R to stop or you can do command R and hit the space bar to stop. But that command R is two keys and it takes a for me it takes a look down at the keyboard to know that i'm hitting the right combination of keys that's not that's not good because we're by doing punch and roll we're going to be hitting that record button a lot so what i prefer to do is i prefer to map two keys right next to each other so i can have one finger do play and pause and the other one can do record and pause or record and stop play and stop and record and stop the way we do that is we come to the actions menu we show the actions list and the the keys that we're remapping are called are in the transport section and there's the play stop which is mapped to right now we can see that it's mapped to the space uh, space bar we want to add a hotkey we don't want to get rid of that space bar we like that space bar we use that a lot but we want to just add another key that makes sense for us when we're doing punch and roll recording so i'll add that key now, I happen to be using the uh, a keyboard that has a number pad. If you're not using a keyboard with a number pad, you can map it to any other key that makes sense to you. I happen to like mine to be mapped. I like play and pause or play and stop to be mapped to the equal sign on the number pad. So I'll just hit that key on the number pad and we can see that Reaper adds that keyboard mapping to play and stop. The same thing for the next one down is for the transport record option. I want to add a key for that. And I want to add, in my case, I'll just add the key right next to it, the slash key that's on the number pad. Again, this can be any key that makes sense for you. So I'm going to add the number pad slash to mine. So now, in addition to hitting play to play and play and stop to toggle the play, I can also hit the equal sign on the keyboard uh, on the number pad, and I can do the same thing for re uh, record. Okay, so now we actually have everything we need set up to do punch and roll recording everything's in place so the way i'll have it is you'll be able to see my fingertips down on the keyboard i'll add um we'll just how about we just take a, a random wikipedia page so that i'll be cold on it i'll try and do punch and roll recording on a paragraph of, or two of some random article on wikipedia that i'm really cold on so that it will actually be likely that i'll make a bunch of mistakes we'll just take an article from the front page. So how about we take, I don't know, this link is blue. Let's figure out what this link is and we'll see if we've been hired to read a script about Richard Ernest Dupuy. I have no idea who Richard Ernest Dupuy is. So let's do a punch and roll recording for the first paragraph here and we'll make some mistakes. Chances are we'll make some mistakes and we'll go back and we'll try and get a recorded paragraph that's also edited by the end of the recording. So let's go ahead and get, get started. So I'll start by hitting record. Richard Ernest Dupuy from <laughs> mistake right at the beginning. Richard Ernest Dupuy from Wikipedia, the free encyclopedia. Colonel Richard Ernest Dupuy, born March 24th, 1887, died April 25th, 1975 was a United States Army officer and military historian. Dupuy was a reporter with the New York Herald before his National Guard artillery unit was called up to serve in World War I. He transferred to the regular Army after the war. I biffed on that sentence. So now, because I, I, I didn't like the way that, that felt in my mouth, so what I'll do is I'll rewind, lead myself in, and after the pause at the end of the sentence, where the mistake, uh, then the next sentence is where the mis mistake occurred, I'll hit the record button, and just keep recording. So I've moved the cursor back. I hit play. Dupuy was, was a reporter, reporter with the New, New York, York Herald, Herald before his National Guard artillery unit was called to serve up. Called called to serve up. So let's rewind and do that again. Army officer and military, military historian. historian. Dupuy was a reporter with the New York Herald before his National Guard artillery unit was called up to serve in World War One. He transferred to the regular army after the war, serving in a number of public relations roles. During World War II, he served as acting director of public relations. Whoa. So I, that, I was losing cadence there, so now I've 
hit stop. I've moved the cursor back. I'll lead myself in. And right before the, the sentence with the mistake, I'll hit record and keep going. He transferred to the regular, regular army, army after, after the, the war, war, serving in a number of public relations roles. During World War II, he served as acting director of public relations at Supreme Headquarters Allied Expeditionary Force. Not good. So we'll do that again. To the regular army after the war, serving in a number of public relations, relations roles. roles. During World War II, he served as acting director of public relations at Supreme Headquarters Allied Expeditionary Force under General Dwight D. Eisenhower. On D-Day, June 6, 1944, Dupuy was the first to announce on radio that the invasion of Normandy was taking place. Did I stumble there? I might have. We'll just move the cursor, we'll hit play, and we'll go again. Supreme Headquarters Allied Expeditionary Force under, under General, General Dwight D. Eisenhower. Eisenhower. On D-Day, June 6, 1944, Dupuy was the first to announce on radio that the invasion of Normandy was taking place. He was also present for the signing of the German Instrument of Surrender in Berlin on May 8, 1945. Dupuy retired from the Army after the war and became a prolific military historian, working with his son, Trevor N. Dupuy. Let's try that end again. He was also present for the signing of the German, German Instrument, Instrument of, of Surrender, Surrender in Berlin, Berlin on May 8, 1945. Dupuy retired from the Army after the war and became a prolific military historian, working with his son, Trevor N. Dupuy. Okay, so we've recorded it. We made a bunch of mistakes, but we've also made a bunch of uh, corrections. And now at the end, we have a file that is hopefully edited and should make some sense. Even if it doesn't, we can always go back and do another pickup and punch in again. So let's listen to what we've created. Richard Ernest Dupuy from Wikipedia, the Free Encyclopedia. Colonel Richard Ernest Dupuy, born March 24, 1887, died April 25, 1975, was a United States Army officer and military historian. Dupuy was a reporter with the New York Herald before his National Guard artillery unit was called up to serve in World War I. He transferred to the regular Army after the war, serving in a number of public relations roles. There was a little hiccup there, right? So even though that wasn't, uh, even though because I tried to punch in a, a, something very tight. So I need to slip that a little bit. So I'll just go to that little section, hold my cursor over the, over the item that I need to slip, and I just need to slip that just a little tiny bit to tighten it up. Let's see if that works. Serve in World War I. He transferred to the regular Army after the war, serving in a number of public relations roles. During World War II, he served as an extra little bit there, so we'll just take that extra breath out. We will split. I don't have my keyboard shut up. My keyboard's set up on this uh, portable install of Reaper, so we'll just uh, take that out, take that breath out of public relations roles. During World War II, he served as acting director of public relations at Supreme Headquarters Allied Expeditionary Force under General Dwight D. Eisenhower. On D-Day, June 6, 1944, Dupuy was the first to announce on radio that the invasion of Normandy was taking place. He was also present for the signing of the German Instrument of Surrender in Berlin on May 8, 1945. Dupuy retired from the Army after the war and became a prolific military historian, working with his son, Trevor N. Dupuy. So that worked pretty well, right? It, by editing in place and just picking up where I had made a mistake, just picking up right at the sentence before, leading myself in, and then hitting record right at that break, I could just pick up, punch in, and continue to roll tape. So... That is punch and roll recording. At least that's how I do it in Reaper. A couple of keyboard shortcuts mapped to my hand, having my script on screen, and all of a sudden it makes it so that you can edit and record all in the same session. I hope that helps. Now, get your DAW con configured to do some punch and roll recording. Get yourself a mic. Get in that booth and record something. Record something amazing. We'll talk to you next time. Thanks so much.